to show you something over here. There's just some complex ripple patterns. I want to show you what you can see. Complex ripple patterns, okay. I got here just in time to forget what he was saying. Ah, this is it. This is what I want to show. Careful. Yeah, nice. Okay. Lots of stories in this boulder right here. Yo! Lots of stories here. All right. A billion brownie points are up for grabs here. <laughs> For anybody who can tell me the full and complete story of this environment. Oh, wow. Of deposition. This is a really good. Full and complete and total story of the environment of deposition. What are these things we're looking at here? Yeah, ripple marks. Okay, Ty is on his way to a billion brownie points. Ripple marks. What direction was the current flowing, Shiva, to form those ripple marks? Towards you or towards that way? Um, Loot? Yeah. yeah, it must be that way. Why must it be that way? Because of the direction. Okay. The but there's something else here that tells you something really important about the environment. How do we know these ripples were not deposited by wind on land? How do we know? You know, you can get ripples in a desert environment. I'm sure that, sure that Shiva has seen ripples in the desert environment in Haran. How do we know these are rip river ripples or they were produced in water? Look at the outcrop very carefully. There's a clue. How smooth they are, how rounded? Nope. There's a biological cue. cue. Well, what else? You're getting warmer. On the ground. What is that? What is that thingy? Is that a steak or? Pardon me? It's a trail. It's a worm trail. Do worms live in the desert? No. Well, in Frank C. Herbert's Dune, they do. Ah. That probably, not. those are worms. Yeah, it would be a little bit bigger. Well, that was a very baby. An embryo, an embryo worm. So what is this? That's probably just, um... That's just weathering, I think. Yeah. But that, these are, I'm sorry, these are worm burrows across, or worm tracks across the ripples. So it's got to be uh, subaqueous ripples. Whoa, this is so exciting. You, wanna, I can't believe it. There's a penny you need a scale. Size. When you take pictures, you got to have a scale. Oh, that penny is wonderful. Yes, thank you. Justin, you are doing super today. You're getting all brown. Oh, no. How much are those worth in the black market? <laughs> about a penny. <laughs> about a penny. Uh, yeah, I think you got some. Well, then at least I have plenty of scales. Yeah. Oh, wow. The points don't matter. Just super. This is. It's like whose line is it in here? See, 53. Well, that. <laughs> but the number. Okay. It's kind of arbitrary. Arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, poor Emily. You know, all these other students are just racing to billions of brownie points, and Emily just keeps <laughs> losing her brownie points. <laughs> she doesn't start with too many either, so it's kind of goes. Oh, I got like a bajillion. Uh, okay. yeah. okay. I, 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 I we didn't put the brownie points. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, you know, I'm being cruel to Emily, i got to admit, so I'm being unfair to her. We'll have to start picking on somebody else. Emily can choose who I pick on. So at any rate, um, did somebody take yeah. a chunk of that sandstone so we can look at the very good? I got Please. some right here, Super too. tuber. Okay, we can make some final descriptions of it in the lab. What we're going to do now, all right, we have this Pennsylvania River system. You've described the, uh, the very uh, well-sorted, uh, sub-rounded to sub-angular quartz sandstone. There probably are some feldspar grains in there. Um, very well sorted, uh, interbedded with coal, uh, certainly, if you're not taking this penny, I'm taking it. <laughs> I was this coming is... back for it. Oh, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm a little bit more expensive points. than that, actually, however. Um, and we see a lot of evidence of channeling. We see evidence of ripple marks. And by the way, over here, there are some cross beds. Let's take a look at the cross beds. Over here. Okay. Let, let me catch it. Actually, there's a little lesson here. Does anybody care to try to see what direction was the way up? These are cross beds. So, you think that way? What exactly is a cross bed? The young direction. On this side. The dip? Well, I'm not this big one. Yeah, okay. Do you mean the inclination of the cross beds? Yeah. You want to find the tangential surface. I'm not actually sure. Well, this one is a little bit op more obvious. Look at how these beds come from here and they come down here. Oops, where did I lose them here? There. There they go. Tangentially down there. So I think here they're oblique. See that angle there? And they come down here like this, and they're tangential <laughs> down there. So, uh, so these are kind of hard. I'll have to explain cross beds to the 690 students. But cross beds are related to ripple marks. They're inclined layers of sediment that are really within ripples and within sand dunes. And it looks to me like the direction of current flow was from here, from me, that way because the inclined beds that are inclined in normal bedding, they're, they, they are tangential down at that end. I'm not absolutely sure. It's uh, Kelsey's originally thought the other way, but I'm not absolutely sure. It's just the perspective on these things. The water would be going from, from me over in that direction to form that ripple there. I mean, that cross bed there. It's hard to interpret. Well, don't you think because the stuff to the right is kind of making it incline to be going the other way? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what Kelsey looked at first, and I have to admit, it looks the other way with those. It could be. You know, the currents can change their direction. It's um, Part of the problem here is the perspective in which this slab, this face is uh, cut. So what are you, which, what were you saying the cross beds were? Cross beds are inclined bedding within a ripple. I can actually draw it here. Let, yes, I can do that real quickly. Cross beds look like this. And they're not always preserved with ripples, but um, they would be. This is the way up, the younging direction here. Those are the cross beds within, within dunes or ripples. And. <clears throat> Um, I, I would have to be, a, you know, explain how these things form, but these are inclined layers of quartz grains, and you see that the top of the bed, they ha they are sort of truncated, or they have they meet at a high angle at the bottom. Here, let me draw the beds in here. They're tangential to the bottom of the normal bedding, whereas at the top, they 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 hit obliquely. And it's just the perspective on these things that makes it difficult for me to determine what the direction of current flow was on these. These are not textbook cross beds. But, I mean, you, they're definitely cross beds, but they're not revealing uh, the current flow direction as far as I'm concerned. I think there's some ambiguity there. I think it's that way for these down here. <clears throat> At any rate. Let's go and have our lunch for a half hour, then we got to